friends, welcome to Water Bear Reads, where I chat about illustrated classics and modern classics. My name is Heather, I'm so glad you stopped by. Here in Maine, we thought that spring had arrived, and unfortunately, it had not arrived. <laughs> we had the biggest snowstorm, and then it was followed by an ice storm, and before that, I had really thought spring was here. I mean, even my tulips were beginning to come up. We really don't get any good blooms until probably around very late April. Uh, beginning of May. And here in Maine, we're still covered in snow. We do have one consolation in Maine, and that is that this time of year is when we start harvesting maple syrup. And we even have a weekend set aside where we have a festival and celebrate it. We couldn't go this year because of the storm, <laughs> unfortunately. Next year, around this time, I'll get some footage of the maple syrup places and I'll put it in my intros. I did at least get one bucket that I put in my intro when my son and I went for a hike. After the roads were cleared, we went out for a hike to Audubon and I saw that bucket with the, the spout coming out of the trees. But anyway, so today I wanted to chat with you about all the books that I received over the holidays, new books that I've seen around town and picked up, and used books as well, some nonfiction and picture books. And I also have a very special thing that I wanted to do. When Folio Society had their Leap Day special, they offered a mystery book if you were to purchase a Folio Society book. And I actually had a gift card that was a holiday gift from one of my sisters, my sister Tamara. And so I decided to go ahead and purchase a book that I had long had my eye on. It actually arrived over a week ago and it's been sitting here and I have not yet touched it at all. It's still sealed. I have not been able to wait to film this video so I can see what's in it. But I thought I would open that up with you guys and make it my first unboxing <laughs> on my YouTube channel. And then also we can discover what the mystery book is together. I have no idea what it is. I also have decided that once a year I'm going to put a bulk Blackwell's order in. Um, instead of doing multiple little orders all throughout the year so that it can all be shipped together. So I'm going to show you all the books that I purchased from Blackwell's um, for my annual purchase. Before I get to the books, I wanted to show you these seed packets that I picked up in the autumn when I visited the Maine Coastal Botanical Gardens. They're from Hudson Valley Seed Company, and this company sells seeds in packets with artwork commissioned by various artists. For example, this packet, Multi-Hued Yarrow, is illustrated by an artist whose name is Madison Safer. And one of her books has caught my eye in the past. It's called Before Colors, and it's just beautiful. And so I was kind of tickled when I realized that I picked up the seed packet by the same illustrator. It's really neat as well because if you open up the sticker, which is a type of sticker that you can re-stick again and again, the seed packets are inside and it opens up, it shows more art. So you can even maybe put them around the house if you have a little frame or something. And it has a little paragraph inside about the plant. So, multi-hued yarrow, a plant with no weaknesses. Yarrow's scientific name refers to Achilles, the mythological warrior who was invulnerable, save for a spot on his heel. And then it goes on to talk about the yarrow and the properties of yarrow. And then the other packet I picked up because when I did my vlog about Rudyard Kipling's home in Vermont, I discovered through speaking to the folks over at the Landmark Trust that Rudyard Kipling and his wife Carrie really loved zinnias, like they used to order quite a few zinnias. So when I went to go visit and when I pictured all my jungle books, I chose zinnias as the flower. And when I saw this white zinnia, I decided to buy it. This seed packet is illustrated by Shu Ju Wong, and I looked her up, and what she likes to do is take traditional designs and mold them into a contemporary look. She tends to refer to Chinese or Middle Eastern patterns, and they're just beautiful. I love them. So very happy about that. Let me open this one up for you too. Polar Bear Zinnia, and there's the packet inside. And here's the case. Very pretty. Blooms and bears in the balance. Soft folded layers of creamy white with a sturdy yet elegant stature. Packs of polar bears in flower form roam the gardens, soaking up the sun. 
so we'll see we'll see how I do I planted them and they're starting to come up a little bit they have so many beautiful packets they also put their their designs on cards greeting cards and such do give it a look the um, Hudson Valley Seed Company I've got my coffee here I bought this mug at Beatrix Potter's Hilltop Farm when I visited with my mom a couple of years ago but anyway so grab yourself a cozy beverage get comfortable let me take a sip of coffee and we'll get started I have one picture book that I wanted to share with you that I picked up and that is I am made of mountains an ode to national parks the landscapes of us and I bought this at my local bookstore because my son is having an author visit this Friday. Alexandra S.D. Heinrichs will be visiting the school and signing these. She's a main author and she has some really beautiful books out. And I was particularly attracted to this because, as you might know if you've been watching this channel, we love our national parks in the USA. On the end papers it has this map of all the national parks. And then the way it's set out is that there is a poem and then a discussion of the national park. So for example, this one is for the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And I picked this one out because it had all the spring vibes. The poem goes, I am made of hills, my green skirts twirl and swish, spin by spin my seedlings sprout, each one a blooming wish. And then it has a box about the Great Smoky Mountains and it has a few facts about the national park. And here's another one that's Shenandoah National Park with the same idea. And what's really cool is at the end, at the back, it actually has, oh, I pulled this aside too to show you Acadia National Park because that, that's the one that's kind of close by me that I should take you there one day with me. Maybe I'll do a vlog one day where I go to Acadia National Park. What I also love about this book is that at the very back, it has all the, a lot of history and details and facts about the national parks. And one of the things it says is that national parks, as beautiful as they are, do sometimes have troubled beginnings where people have had to move out of areas that the government has wanted to turn into a national park. So I thought that was interesting to have that perspective and that history behind it. I love this book and highly recommend. And it's by a main author, so I'm super proud of it. This one I want to show you just came out earlier this month, and it is The Secret Garden, illustrated by Kate Lewis. She's a Tennessee-based illustrator. And this is a lush stroll through a beautiful garden. I am going to treasure this version for the rest of my life. It is so beautiful. First of all, you have these end papers, and I've picked out a few to show you because there's an illustration on basically every single page. Maybe one or two are missing it, but not very many. There's full page spreads that are just delightful. Another full page spread. And these spot illustrations as well. Every chapter has a chapter heading illustration. Here is one of the chapter heading illustrations that I thought was so pretty. The robin. We had some robins in our garden the other day. It was so nice. They stopped by and they landed in the holly bush. We have seen no cedar wax wings. Well, I saw them about a month ago but they didn't land in the holly bush and now all the berries are almost gone so I don't think they will come but I usually love seeing the cedar wax wings. There's also some decorations at the bottom of many of the pages that are just so beautiful. But yeah, I'm very excited to have this version of the secret garden. It's such a delight. Speaking of birds, my mom sent me this book, The Burgess Bird Book for Children. Um, as well as the Burgess Animal Book for Children. Thornton Burgess wrote the Old Mother West Wind stories, and he has a Peter Rabbit as well, different from Beatrix Potter's Peter Rabbit. We're busy reading this one, and we're almost done. I think we have two more chapters and we're finished. In the Burgess Bird Book for Children, um, Peter Rabbit goes to an orchard, and he meets all these birds and he chats with these birds and learns about their lives and their habits. And it's really interesting. My son has an interest in birds because we have had that bird feeder hanging up for years and years and years. So he's always seeing them. And we have a little bird card that we always look at whenever something lands on the bird feeder. I grew up in Africa and going on safari 
one of my things that I love about going in safari is never knowing what you're going to see. And that's kind of what I love about having a bird feeder is you kind of get that feeling of never knowing what you might see next. Who knows what bird will land on that feeder. But yeah, we've really been enjoying this and it has pictures as well. It's illustrated. Let me show you. Here's one with the heron and the kingfisher. I love kingfishers as well. Speaking of my mom, another gift that my mom sent me for a holiday gift is a book that has long been on my wish list and it is the Tashin 40th anniversary collection of fairy tales by the Brothers Grimm on one side and fairy tales by Hans Christian Andersen on the other side. It's edited by Noelle Daniel and her introduction and artist information is just amazing. Um, when I was doing my Snow White Illustrator Explorer, I was missing a very relevant piece of information and I couldn't find it anywhere. And then I said, well, wait a minute, let me check and see if this has anything about it. And sure enough, it did. It's just very informative, very thorough. Tashin has included the artwork of illustrators who have sort of a historical or romantic quality to them. Like for example, Walter Crane illustrated The Frog Prince beautifully. And one of my favorites of Snow White by Wanda Zeigner Ebel. And I love her style so much. It's kind of um, folk style, like Russian folk style almost. And it's just beautiful. I love her illustrations. So that would be the Grimm side, and then I'll show you the Anderson side. I really enjoy this one of the Ugly Duckling, and this artist is Theo van Hoytema. I think I'm saying it right. I hope I'm saying it right. But I just love his style. It's so cool. Also in the back of the book, they have the artist biographies, which are so amazing and like a very thorough biography. And Eleanor Veer Boyle, I was so happy to see inside this version. This is an illustration of Thumbelina. And I was so happy to see it because I actually came across her illustrations when I was doing my Beauty and the Beast Illustrator Explorer. She's the only illustrator that I ever came across who depicted the beast as an ocean creature. She depicted him as a walrus in look. And I just thought that was really neat and very different. So here's an illustration of hers. I should point out though, that even though there are illustrations of Thumbelina as well as the Little Mermaid, Thumbelina, Little Mermaid, and Emperor's New Clothes um, are not in this version, but you can find them in the other versions, the ones that are not the 40th anniversary editions where they have the Hans Christian Andersen books by themselves. Um, I don't think there were any Brothers Grimm's tales that stood out to me as missing. Not, not any that were on my radar anyway. But there are a lot of other tales that are more obscure, so that's really interesting as well. I was very relieved to find that they have my favorite fairy tale that I've just loved my whole life, and it's the tinderbox. <laughs> when I was a little girl, I loved those dogs with the huge eyes, and I also loved the idea of going into a tree and uh, getting underground via a tree trunk. I just thought that was just amazing. For some reason when I was a kid, anything that had to do with going inside of a tree, being inside of a tree just really intrigued me. I had been watching this publishing company that seems to publish some of the prettiest books. It's called Lit Joy Crate. And they tend to publish fan fiction and illustrated beautiful versions of fan fiction. And I have noticed them before because they had beautiful versions of The Secret Garden and Little Women. So last year they had this on pre-order and I picked it up, Stardust by Neil Gaiman. And it's illustrated by a Catalan artist by the name of Monse Rubio. And it's just beautifully illustrated. So here's a little insert, but there's the end papers, there's double page spreads. It also has this beautiful transparent piece of paper covering an illustration. I love that they have these beautiful sprayed edges. Unfortunately, this one is no longer available. And also they had Coraline from Neil Gaiman, which is also no longer available. But keep an eye out, if you sign up for their website, they're always coming out with really pretty versions of books. I signed up on their website so that I could see when things come out because I'm actually rather impressed with this. I also wanted to show you that the end paper in the front is different from the end paper in the back. 
which I thought was neat. And this one, The Swifts, is a book that I've been seeing everywhere and I was delighted when one of my son's friends gave this to him as a gift. The Swifts, Dictionary of Scoundrels by Beth Lincoln with illustrations by Claire Powell. I'm not really sure what this is about, but I'm looking forward to reading it. When Little Women was first published, it was illustrated by um, Louisa May Alcott's younger sister, May Alcott, who you might know as Amy. And in addition to May Alcott, um, there were three other female illustrators who very early in the novel's life illustrated it. And um, one of those illustrators is Clara M. Bird. And when I saw this version being published, by Abeville Press, I was so intrigued and had my eye on it forever. And this is wonderful because in the introduction to this book, it not only talks about May Alcott's illustrations, but the other two women, other than Clara and Bird, who illustrated Little Women in its early days. And one of them was Alice Barbara Stevens, and the other one was Jessie Wilcox Smith. The discussion was all about their lives and what drew them to illustrate. And Clara M. Bird was actually trained as a stained glass window maker. She actually trained at Tiffany's. And um, she was one of the female il illustrators who just reached a great deal of success. And um, a lot of it was because of how determined she was. At one point, I think she even hurt her right hand, which was her drawing hand, and she had to learn to illustrate with her left hand. And I wanted to show you some of these. This is these end papers with Orchard House in them. And there you can see her signature. I think that's really neat. Here's the first page, the frontispiece. I wonder why she had Joe and Amy looking directly at the reader, while Marmee and Beth and Meg were not looking directly in front of them. So I was just curious about that. Here are some other illustrations. Some of them are in black and white. And I thought they're beautiful. And then here's another one that's in color. Here's Clara and Bird. So you can see the illustrator. And they have pictures of Jesse Wilcox Smith and Alice Barbara Stevens, as well as May Alcott, who is this one right here, as well as some of her work. This owl you can actually see in Orchard House. She drew it for Louisa. It's on the wall inside of Louisa's bedroom, which I always love seeing when I go explore Orchard House. I just wanted to read this part to you. Louisa May Alcott's mother often advised her to be something in yourself. Let the world know you are alive. May Alcott Neeriker, which was her name after May Alcott married. May Alcott Neeriker, Alice Barber Stevens, Jesse Wilcox Smith, and Clara Miller Bird did not have to be reminded. Against considerable odds, they pursued the creative impulse that compels certain people to coalesce with their thoughts and visions into pictures created for others to enjoy. In the process, each immortalized something of herself in four uniquely beautiful editions of Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. This was just a remarkable version of Little Women. I know that Abeville Press has another classic that they just put out, Secret Garden. I'm kind of keen to collect that one as well. I love the old classic illustrators and the history that they provide. So now it's time for my Blackwell's book haul. And before I begin, I just want to give a shout out to Miranda Mills because a lot of these books I've seen on her um, channel. Miranda Mills is the go-to to see what's coming out in the UK, all those gorgeous books that make me so envious. A new version of A Traveler in Time. This one illustrated by John Broadley. And I actually saw some of John Broadley's work when a book that he had came out and I was just drawn to it immediately. I loved his illustrations and that one had color illustrations. This one is black and white. I love how detailed he is in his illustration. And there's also a little chapter heading at the top. I just think it's beautiful. I read A Traveler in Time a couple of years ago for the first time since I grew up. I have a feeling I read it when I was a little girl because it seemed vaguely familiar to me. And I've always been attracted to time travel books anyway. John Broadley also has artwork on some home goods that you might find at Fortnum and Mason and the Fine Cheese Company. In fact, I really fell in love with his butter dish. <laughs> there's a butter dish where there's a little cow at the top in his illustrations around the butter dish. I'll leave a link below to the Fine Cheese Company so you can see the butter dish. I follow this publisher on um, Instagram 
And I was in Bath a couple of years ago and I came across the Armourer's House at Topping's Bookstore. It's illustrated by Isabel Greenberg and I really enjoyed this. And I've just kind of fallen in love with this publishing company, Manderley Press. When I saw Manderley Press publish China Court along with Emily Maud's illustrations, I know Emily Maud because of the Anthropology 12 Day of Christmas plates that I collect. By the way, so many of their plates are good for Easter as well. So I pulled this one out for Easter and I have some others that I pulled out. But so anyway, I know about Emily Maud through Anthropology. It is decorated so beautifully with beautiful end papers and chapter headings. I reached out to Manderley Press to find out some information about what inspired Emily Maud when she was decorating China Court. And I think that things that spoke to her are nature and heritage, especially heritage. Now me, not having read it yet, I can't really add to it. So um, I'll read it and hopefully be able to add a little bit more to that. I love this version so much. Now the following books I just see everywhere. Last year I bought The Halloween Party and I showed you guys this in one of my autumn videos. But of course I have been staring at these beautiful Agatha Christie's forever and just had to buy a few of them. Death on the Nile, 450 from Paddington. This one's the most beautiful. Murder on the Orient Express. And they all have illustrated in papers, as well as the 450 from Paddington and the Orient Express also have these really pretty chapter headings with trains that I love. Here's the 450 from Paddington in papers. And here's Death on the Nile, which I thought was really pretty, the in papers. For whatever reason, HarperCollins published Halloween Party shorter than the others a little bit. But anyway, I love them. So proud to have them on my bookshelf. Finally, after watching booktubers with these books and going, oh, I just want some of those Agatha Christie's. And this final book that I got from Blackwell's came out a little earlier this year, and it is The Wind in the Willows, illustrated by David Roberts. And I just think this is the most wonderful version to read to young children because it is so well illustrated. It's mostly unabridged. They did cut out the chapter titled The Piper at the Gates of Dawn, where Pan makes an appearance. But what's really cool is that throughout the book, you might find little allusions to Pan there at Toad Hall. And there in that lampshade, that Tiffany style lampshade, you can see Pan. There's allusions to Pan all throughout the book to make up for the loss of the chapter. That, by the way, happens to be my favorite chapter, but I understand why so many editions remove that one from the story because it, it doesn't really follow the same storyline. So it can be a little bit confusing for a little one and it can also perhaps break that momentum that you might have gained in reading with The Wind in the Willows to a younger child. I wanted to show you some of these illustrations. Here's one. There's the Wildwood. Here is a full page spread of Toad <laughs> when he's escaping jail. So pretty. But yeah, I really love this version. And we know David Roberts very well because we read Lumineer series. I don't have the dust jacket because I found this one at a garage sale. But of course, Rosie Revere, engineer. We've read this picture book many times along with all the other questionnaire series books. And then this book illustrated by David Roberts, we have read so many times, I almost know it by heart, and that is The Beginner's Guide to Bear Spotting. And be thanks to this one, my son and I both know what to do if ever we come across a black bear in the wilds of Maine. <laughs> well, at least I hope I do. <laughs> But anyway, those are the books that we got from Blackwell's and they also conclude the illustrated classics and illustrated fiction books. Now I'm going to show you a couple of nonfiction books that I received as gifts. I have two nonfiction books to show you and the first one was a gift from one of my best friends and it's called Bibliophile. And I've had my eye on this one for a long time so I was so excited when I received this one. It's by Jane Mount. And Jane Mount in her introduction talks about how one day she was in her small, tiny Manhattan apartment and she had a blank sheet of paper in front of her and she didn't know what to draw. So she looked up at the bookshelf and she started drawing her books. And her friend stopped by and said, wow, that looks amazing. I want to go out and buy all those books right now. And so she knew she kind of had something. And so she just started drawing books, bookshelves for people. If you are a person who likes book lists, this is a great book for you. 
There's so many amazing book lists in different genres. Like here's one, novels of the late 1900s, greed and growth. It also has some inserts about different editions of books that I found very interesting. In the beginning, it has a bunch of children's book lists, like this one, I don't know if you can see. It also has inserts on bookstores all throughout the book. I was thrilled to see a mention of one of the booktubers that I follow, Colby Sharp was mentioned in this book, which I found amazing. I really enjoyed this book list called Space and Aliens, which I thought was really cool. And then what was even more fun was that on the next page, they have all the planets that you might find in books. And, and you have to kind of name what planet belongs to what uh, book. It's just a delight and just a wonderful coffee table or bedside book as well. And then the other one, which also makes a wonderful coffee table or bedside book, is Around the World in 80 Trees. My mother and father-in-law gave this to me for Christmas. And it is by Jonathan Drury, illustrations by Lucille Clare. I had taken out Around the World in 80 Plants through the library system and I read it and I just loved it. And I really wanted to read trees, but my library didn't have the trees. What I really enjoy about it is that the articles that are in here discuss history and how the plant or the tree relates and has its place in human history and in the makeup of civilization. For example, the alder tree is a tree that um, grows where it's wet. And it is thanks to this tree that we actually have the city of Venice because it is the alder tree's um, wood that never, once it's underwater, it doesn't rot for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, it will stay fine. As When it's above the water, it can rot, but below it will not rot. And in Venice, the foundational ground has been laid using alder tree logs. And I just really love the illustrations. They're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And it takes you around the world. So it'll pull up a few trees in each country and all over the world. And so for example, here is, let's see, I showed you Italy, and here's the durian in Malaysia. So yeah, it's just all these beautiful trees all around the world, not only specifics about the trees, but how they relate to humans and human history. And I just find them so interesting to read. So I highly recommend this book if you are interested in learning about botanical history. So now we're at the second handbooks that I found. And one of these books was actually a holiday gift from my brother-in-law. And it is the Illustrated Junior Library Edition of Anne of Avonlea. I have the Anne of Green Gables already. I think I've mentioned before how I collect all the Illustrated Junior Library Editions. And this is my most recent acquisition. It's illustrated by Claire Seifert. And I had a really hard time figuring out anything about this illustrator. There is some information about a Claire Seifert who is an artist who really loves to produce artwork on that TV show, that Beauty and the Beast TV show, the one that was set in New York where he lived underground. Oh gosh, Linda Hamilton, that's it. So I think the style looks similar. I think it's the same artist. I'm just not 100% sure because there was no like real concrete information <laughs> saying that yes, she also illustrated Anne of Avonlea. From just looking at the style, I would say yes, it's the same person. And there's one of them. By the way, I loved that Beauty and the Beast show. <laughs> I want to watch it again, actually, now that I'm thinking of it. This next set of books you will never believe are actually used, but they look brand new. I found them. There's an antique store nearby within walking distance of me. And if you go downstairs, there's so many books. And it's a collection of rolled dolls. And they're all hardback. And I've got found Matilda, James and the Giant Peach, the BFG, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Danny, Champion of the World, the Twits, and George's Marvelous Medicine. I've also spoken on this channel about how much I love the Hero and the Crown. So I had to go and pick up a version for myself. I found this one, a used copy of this one. So I, I was very excited to find that and add it to my bookshelves. My son and I have on our list, we're going to read Annie, an old fashioned story by Thomas Meehan, illustrated by Julia Noonan. I believe the way it worked was Annie was written for Broadway first. And then Thomas Noonan wrote a novel about it. And then the movie that I loved and grew up with 
came out. And when I was a little girl, I loved watching Annie. I watched Annie all the time. And I don't know what made me look, but one day I thought, I wonder if this was ever a book. So I did find this and I was so happy to find that it was also illustrated. Mrs. Hannigan. <laughs> Here's that part where they're abducting Annie. The illustrated pages are glossy, so I'm sorry if my ring light's in there. But yeah, so I'm excited to read this with my son. He has not seen the movie with me yet, so we'll read it and then watch the movie. One of my favorites. Selma Lagerlof's The Wonderful Adventures of Nils. It's got beautiful black and white illustrations. And the illustrator is Thea Kleros. If you've read this book, let me know in the comments. I'm very excited to get to this. But I don't really know 100% what, what it's about or anything. <laughs> I saw on one of my favorite booktubers channels. Her name is Elizabeth and the name of her channel is Sips and Stories and I just love her videos. They are so well researched and well presented and she chooses the most interesting books. But she talked about this book and I realized that I really want to read that and that is When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit. One of my close friends, the movie is one of her favorite movies ever but I wanted to read the book as well. This one is illustrated by Judith Kerr herself, the author, and it has these really pretty chapter heading illustrations. Here's another one. Very excited when I saw this at my used bookstore. My final book before my Folio Society unboxing is this book and I was so excited. I was going out on a walk. I was feeling kind of drab one day and went for a walk and decided to go check the, my neighborhood book boxes and see what I could swap out. And I came across this version of Anna Karenina and it's a little bit torn. Somebody, I guess, took the library markings off and ripped it, unfortunately. But I was so excited to find it because it's illustrated by Fritz Eichenberg. And I love Fritz Eichenberg. I came across his work when I was doing my Jungle Book Illustrator Explorer. His work is so wonderful. He's a World War II escapee. He escaped World War II by moving to the U.S. and he just does some remarkable work. So each one of the parts has this introductory illustration around it and then there's color illustrations throughout and they're just gorgeous. And so when I found this in a book box, I did a happy dance. I wanted to show you this too because it has this weird little cork. Two of the same illustrations, one right after the other. <laughs> okay, so the time has come to open this box. My first unboxing. Let me see if I can do it where you can actually see it. Here we go. Let's see, this might take me a minute, so if I have to cut a little, I will, but I am definitely opening it. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I just opened, I just sliced them. And nope, still need work. Here we go. Hmm. And here we have We've got some wrapping. Okay, let's take these two books out. <laughs> Throw that on the ground. So now, here we go. Let's see what is the mystery book. I am so excited to find out this. <laughs> Hang on a second. Let's get this all unwrapped. Okay, so here's the one. I'm going to try not to look. The one that I bought was The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, which I'll unwrap in a minute and show you guys. But the mystery book is... Hmm. Oh, interesting! Susan Sontag on photography. I don't know this one. So that looks interesting. I'll have to read about that. Here's that very famous picture of the migrant worker. So this is interesting. I'll have to read this book and tell you guys about it. So that's really neat and nice surprise. And I'm going to be right back. I'm just going to take off the wrap for the Tenant of Wildfell Hall and I'll show you this one real quick. Okay, so I've got it unwrapped. 
I have been wanting to read this book forever. I have seen the movie for the Tenet of Wildfell Hall, but I'm just so interested in the book itself and Anne Bronte's writing because, I mean, I don't really know any of her books. I haven't read Anne Bronte before, but yeah, I don't even know, who, I don't remember who this illustrator is either. I have to double check. Is this the same illustrator as Jane Eyre? No, Valentina Cato. Let me find another illustration. Oh, there's another one for you. Beautiful illustrations. I'm so excited and happy to have this one. Thank you to my little sister for the gift card. So that is it. If you are still around, thank you so much for sticking around for the end of this. And I'm so happy to have shared my very first book unboxing with you guys. Let me know in the comments which of these books appeal to you and that you find interesting. I just wanted to tell you guys that I might be a bit scarce during the month of April because my mom is coming to visit from New Mexico and she's joining us to watch the solar eclipse. Once a year, my husband and I and my son go on a vacation somewhere. And my mom's gonna join us this year, and this year we are going to Italy. So I'm very excited. We're flying into Venice, and we are just going to drive around the country. We're gonna go to Pompeii, which has been a dream of mine to go to since I was a little girl fascinated with volcanoes erupting <laughs> and all that stuff, like a lot of kids are, so. I'm very excited to be going there and to have my mom join us as well. And, and my son and I have been reading a ton of books. I've picked out a book to read to myself. It's a Henry James, and I think it's Selected Works of Italy. I'll put it up because I've forgotten the name, but it's. I'm very excited to read that one as well. And I just don't know how much time I'm gonna have to be on YouTube because my mom lives across the country, and so I don't really get to see her that much. So I thought, well, while she's here, let me just rather spend time with my mom. So yeah, so if I'm not on YouTube for the month of April, don't worry, I will be back in May. Sorry about that. If there is any time to be away, it's a great time because it's really just mud season in Maine. Everyone calls it mud season because all it is is mud everywhere. <laughs> so as I said before, the flowers don't really start making their appearance until May in Maine anyway. So when I see you again, I will have flowers hopefully in my video. Enjoy the early spring if you're in the northern hemisphere or your autumn if you're in the southern hemisphere. I'll be back with some footage of Italy for you. And until then, take care and we'll chat soon. Bye. <laughs>